Anybody have any homework questions? All right, so um, last time we did this example. Where there was a wall over here. It wasn't slanted before. I don't know what's going, something's wrong with the foundation, I guess. And uh, there's an arm connected to the wall by a pin joint. And then another arm connected here. Um, And uh, the horizontal arm is moving counterclockwise with an angular velocity. Uh, anybody have that? Is that five? So this is five radians per second. And the vertical one is moving And what are the lengths of these? Um, and we're trying to figure out the acceleration of this point P. Um, and we did it last time with a coordinate system at this point. That's the most sensible place to put the coordinate system because the origin isn't accelerating. But let's just see how it works if this was a problem where, you know, if you're just, if you're setting up a problem uh, and choosing a coordinate system just to make the calculations easier, then you can put it wherever you want. You can put a coordinate system there on the wall and then the origin doesn't accelerate. But uh, a lot of the reasons that you use coordinate systems that are non-inertial is that you're taking measurements with a camera, some kind of camera. There are all sorts of different kinds of cameras that let you measure the locations of things over time. And that camera has to be mounted to something and you can't always control what it's mounted to if you're following motions in some kind of aircraft. You can't, uh, you can't mount a camera to the ground. The aircraft goes out of its range, you know, in a couple seconds or whatever. Um, so you mount things to the object itself or to another aircraft or something like that. And you don't really have a lot of flexibility in what you mount it to. And so then you just, you get what you get and you don't get upset. Um, So let's say now that we mount a coordinate system here. Um, does anybody have the notes from last time in front of them? Can you tell me what the, so last time we calculated that acceleration. And what do we get? Two point five what? Oh. Okay. Okay, so X is two. Okay. Okay. Five. Five twenty five zero. Okay. Okay, so now we're gonna do it with the coordinate system shown there, and hopefully we get the same thing. Um, so now, with the new coordinate system, we need to get the same thing. All 
All right, so is this coordinate system origin accelerating? So the origin is accelerating. And that means that we're going to have to calculate the acceleration of P relative to the ground as the acceleration of P relative to the origin plus the acceleration of the origin relative to the ground. Um, this one is just the circular motion of the origin. And this one um, assumes the origin is not accelerating. and uses the rules for a rotating coordinate system. Okay, so let's do the easy part first, warm up part. Um, so what's the acceleration of the origin relative to the ground? Um, that's equal to alpha cross r plus omega cross quantity omega cross r. Um, these are both constant angular velocities. So this goes away. And let's figure out what these other things are. So omega What we're calculating is, so forget all the other stuff going on right now. What you're trying to do is for each part, each component part, you're just trying to, you know, just think about that part. Don't worry about the other stuff going on. So if this was the coordinate system, but its origin was not accelerating, we're calculating the circular motion of this point as it go, rotates around that. So our omega is going to be the omega of the horizontal body. Uh, that is five radians per second in the positive, or five, yeah, radians per second in the positive z direction. So zero, zero, five. And then we need r. So before you tell me any numbers, tell me what the definition of the r vector is. From the, from the center of the circular motion to the point of interest. The position is from the origin to the point of interest. And uh, it's super important in these problems that you keep that stuff separate now or, you know, it'll mess everything up. So the R vector goes from that uh, cyan point to the origin. Uh, what's that as a vector? That's 0.2 in the negative x direction. And so the acceleration of the origin relative to the ground is equal to 0, 0, 0,05 crossed with the quantity 0, 0, 0,05 cross negative 0 0.200. 0. Um, and that's equal to 0, 0, 005 crossed with 0, negative 1, 0. And so the acceleration of the origin relative to the ground is uh, five, zero, zero.
Okay, and we'll set that aside. We're gonna have to come back to that. At the end, we're gonna have to use relative motion to express the whole thing. Any questions about that part? So really, um, we've done problems like that this whole semester. It's harder now though. Why is it harder? It's because we have more stuff in our head that, that looks like these things, you know what I mean? That's the only, like, it's just harder to remember like, before when the R vector was all we had and lowercase omega was all we had, like, it was obvious that this was the omega we wanted and R, all we knew that was was from the center of the circular motion to the point. But now you have to differentiate between the vector from the center of the circular motion to the point and the position vector, which is from the origin to the point, which would have been zero in this case. Okay. Okay, so now we're going on to um, the acceleration of the point P relative to the origin. Since we're doing this relative to the origin, now we don't have to worry about the origin accelerating. Um, we just have to worry about the coordinate system rotating. So this is just gonna be, uh, the acceleration of P observed in the coordinate system plus capital Omega dot crossed with the position vector plus two times capital Omega crossed with the velocity of the point P that's observed in the coordinate system plus capital Omega cross quantity, capital Omega cross P. There are two forms of that acceleration expression. They mean the same thing. Um, the one represents this, and this is just the observed quantities, and one represents them as the time derivatives of the components. Why did I choose this form in this case? Because you always have to choose one or the other. Yes, exactly. I, I think that's this. That's the only way to think about it. Uh, is if you have the position written as some kind of function of time, then use the derivatives, or then you then you can use the derivatives. If instead you just know angular velocities, angular accelerations and stuff at a single instant, that's not a function of time. So you're gonna to have to use circular motion to calculate these, okay? All right, so let's start working through this little by little. Um, so first, uh, what's the position? So let's go position vector observe velocity, observed acceleration, and then uh, we'll do the omegas. So now we're assuming that the origin is fixed and we just want the position of this point P, okay? So what's the position vector of P in this coordinate system if that coordinate system is fixed? It's zero minus point two, zero. Um, okay. And that's just at a single instant, that's not a function. So, you know, if you take derivatives of that, it, if you think of that as a function and take derivatives, you're all screwed up because this thing is moving and it is accelerating, but we would get derivatives of zero. Um, and then the velocity of P that's observed in the coordinate system. Okay, so that is going to be, all right, well, let's, let's just look at this picture. Um, 
So this, what this point P is doing is it's moving in a circular path like this. Um, and since that's circular motion, the velocity is equal to lowercase omega crossed with the R vector. Um, and this time our omega is, so we've already used the lowercase omega, but that was when we were tracking the motion of the, of the origin. Now we're tracking the motion of the point P relative to the origin. So now our omega is um, positive 10, 0, 0. Okay. Yeah. Well, it's supposed to be, it's supposed to look like this. Uh, Does that make it clear? Like it's it's going forward in front, in front and down, you know, and then up and on. Or you can really do it so it's nice and more narrow, huh? Trying to depict it like, I mean, because it looks almost, it'd be the same shape as broken feedback. Oh, uh, well, the idea is that it, Really, yeah, I mean, it's more here. It really is. If this was exactly square with us, that would be exactly, we'd just be looking at the line coming down in the front. Yep, exactly. Anybody else have trouble visualizing that rotation? Just you and you? Okay. Um, All right, so we have 10, 0, 0. And now we're talking about the R vector. That goes from the center of the circular motion to the point we care about. So what's the R vector here? Yeah, 0, negative 0, 0.20. And that's zero, zero, negative two. And now the acceleration of P observed in that coordinate system is, um, this, we're still dealing with that circular motion, so alpha cross R plus omega cross quantity, omega cross r. Um, it's a constant angular velocity, so that goes away. And so this is equal to 10, 0, 0, crossed with Omega cross R, which we just calculated. So that's zero, zero, negative two. And so you get zero, uh, 20, zero. And now we have to take into account the rotation of the coordinate system. So capital Omega is the angular velocity of the coordinate system. The coordinate system is fixed to the horizontal member. Um, and so that is a rotation about the Z axis of positive five. Okay. Any questions about that?
zero five. And then uh, what's the time derivative of the angular velocity of the coordinate system? Zero, yep. And now we can put this all together. Um, so the acceleration of P relative to the origin is equal to 0, 20, 0 plus omega dot cross P. That goes away because there's no omega dot. plus 2 times omega times the observed velocity who can do that cross product in their head zero plus capital omega crossed with the quantity capital omega cross p I'm not done with you That is equal to zero twenty zero plus uh, let's see zero zero five crossed with uh, one zero zero um. And so the acceleration of P relative to the origin is zero twenty five zero. And now we use the relative motion, the acceleration of P relative to the ground is equal to the acceleration of P relative to the origin plus the acceleration of the origin relative to the ground so 5, 25, 0. Um, and now what if we wanted to track this motion because, you know, there was some sensitive, uh, uh, thing. with a mass of 0.1 kilograms attached at P. Of course, applied to the object by the arm. Um, well, this is just a particle kinetics problem. So if you draw a free body diagram of the thing, what are the forces acting? Uh, there's a weight force of uh, 0.1 times 9.81. So 
one newtons down. And then there's a force vector applied by the arm. And so Newton's second law says F arm X and Y plus zero uh, negative point nine eight one. I just I've dropped off the Z's now. Uh, this is a planar motion. The acceleration is all zeros. The forces are all going to be zeros. Um, and that's equal to the mass times the acceleration um, and so F arm X component is equal to 0.5 Newtons. F arm Y component is equal to uh, 2.5 plus 0.981 and that is equal to 3.4. Four eight one. And you know, calculations like that, then you plan accordingly for what kind of materials to use, whether the thing can sustain it, whether you're gonna have a problem with that, that sort of stuff. Any questions about that? Let me do one more example. So let's say you have this rotating piece that's connected to an arm that's at an angle. Um, and connected to that arm is a disc. Um, let's say that the angle between the horizontal and this arm is 45 degrees. Um, and let's say that this armature is rotating that direction at five radians per second. And that this disc is rotating this direction, 10 radians per second. Ooh, I like those numbers, I guess. They are nice. And let's say we're trying to track this point P. This distance is one meter. And the radius of the diff is 0.6 meters. What's the acceleration?
Well, our first choice that we have to make is where we want to put the coordinate system. In this one, we have a second choice that we have to make, and that's how to orient the coordinate system at the instant we're looking at. Um, there are two rotational motions. There's the one that this arm is connected to, and there's the one that this is connected to. So like always with these, you have to think about which of these objects is the horse and which one's the cowboy. Uh, which of these axes of rotation depends on the position of the other? What's the dependent one, the cowboy? The disc, yep. So we know the coordinate system is going to be fixed to this thing somewhere. Um, and so probably just sort of intuitively what pops into your head are two spots. Uh, either put it here or put it here. Okay. Um, you can get the right answer with either one of those. But what's the drawback of putting it here? The origin's accelerating. Uh, this point is moving in a circular motion target this way. Okay? And so we'd have to deal with relative motion if we put the coordinate system here. If we put the coordinate system here, we don't have to deal with that. Um, and then, uh, the second thing, I mean, we can make our lives a little bit easier with the, with the right... Um, by choosing the right orientation of the coordinate system at this instant. Uh, I don't know, it's not a super big deal, but if we use the coordinate system that was oriented like this, okay, we have to use cosine and sine to represent this vector, and use cosine and sine to represent this vector and add those two together to get the position. Okay, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that would be a good way to do it. If you're if you have a calculate uh, program in your calculator, um, then yeah, that'd be pretty quick to do. Um, I think my inclination would probably be to use a coordinate system that's tilted like that, you know, and then the position vector of this point is just going to be this in the x direction plus this in the negative y direction, um, and the r vector. Uh, when you're talking about this circular motion, it's just going to be in the negative y direction. In whichever coordinate system we use, uh, we're going to have to think about how to represent this rotation. Okay. So this is the first time that it's going to be a little complicated to represent the um, angular velocity of the coordinate system. Okay, well, let's use this coordinate system. So there's X, there's Y, Z is coming out towards us. The way I have it drawn, I guess it would be sort of like that. The origin is not accelerating. Um, and so the acceleration of P is equal to, do we want to use the time derivatives of the components or the uh, observed acceleration and observed velocity? Yeah, we don't have we don't have uh, the position components as functions of time, so this is going to be the observed acceleration of P. Plus capital omega dot crossed with the position vector. Plus 2 times omega crossed with the observed velocity vector of P. Plus capital omega cross quantity capital omega cross P. Um, so 
So let's first come up with the position vector, the observed velocity and observed acceleration. Anyone remember, why don't we talk about the position vector? We're so careful about whether we're talking about observed stuff or stuff connected to the ground. Why don't we talk about that with the position vector? It's the same in either case because instantaneously our implied inertial coordinate system and our rotating coordinate system have the same orientation and the position vector doesn't have any time derivatives in it. So nothing funky happens. Um, all right, so the position vector. This better be good because that's the whole reason we're using this screwy angled coordinate system. Uh, so one meter in the positive X, 0.6 in the negative Y. So one negative 0.6. Okay, that's pretty good. That's to go from the origin to point P. I mean, if you ever get confused about that, just think about a position vector that you know and, and figure out where that vector is going from, you know? Um, position vector is like the coordinates of a thing, so that's a vector from the origin to the thing. Okay. And now the observed velocity vector of P. Um, So we're assuming that the coordinate system is fixed. Okay, this point P is in circular motion like that. Uh, so this is going to be lowercase omega crossed with the R vector. What's lowercase omega? This is also easy in the coordinate system we chose. Um, Right hand rule says it's in that direction, which is our positive x. This stuff screws with my brain so much. I was just like about to do this. Like my body is just like so discombobulated by technology. Um, when I started here, we just had a sandbox and I had a big stick. <laughs> um, all right, so that's. Uh, 10, 0, 0. Um, and the R vector, not the P vector, the R vector goes from the center of the circular motion to P. So that's only negative 0.6 in the y direction. Okay. So 0, negative 0.6, 0. And so you get zero, zero, negative six. And now the acceleration of P that's observed in the coordinate system. Is the angular acceleration of the body crossed with R plus omega cross quantity, omega cross r. Um, there's no angular acceleration, so that goes away. And so this is just equal to 10, 0, 0 crossed with omega cross r, which we had before. So crossed with 0, 0, negative 6. And that's equal to 0, 60, 0. Um, and now we have to think about capital Omega and capital Omega dot. <clears throat> capital Omega dot is easy. That's just 0. That speed isn't changing. It's, it's a constant angular velocity. 
But now for capital Omega, let's think about this coordinate system. Um, and this makes an angle of 45 degrees with the horizontal. Um, and we're trying to figure out what axis this rotation is represented by. So use the right hand rule. Okay. And the axis is pointing straight down. You got that? See that? With a magnitude of five. And so we're talking about an angular velocity vector that's straight down with a magnitude of five. Um, and so from that, you can see that this angle must be 45 degrees. And so our omega vector, our capital omega vector, is equal to the mag, uh, the yeah, the magnitude of five times cosine and sine of this would be 180 degrees. So 45 degrees counterclockwise from that, so we're 225. So cosine and sine of 225. And uh, that is in the third quadrant, so that's negative 3.535, negative 3.5350. Um, now we can plug this all in. The acceleration of P is equal to the observed acceleration, 0, 060, 0, plus capital omega dot crossed with the position vector. That goes away. Plus 2 times, um, fill these in, omega crossed with the observed velocity, uh, omega is negative 3.535, negative 3.535, zero, crossed with um, the observed velocity vector, zero, zero, negative six, plus negative 3.535, negative 3.5350, crossed with the quantity, negative 3.535, negative 3.5350, zero, crossed with the position vector, and the position vector is one negative point six zero. Any chance anyone's been calculating this this whole time? <laughs> yeah. Not anymore, I guess. Okay, let's use time lapse. Uh, say it again. 22.426, okay. Okay, and zero.
the last two examples both had zero for z, but that's not a that's not a general thing with these kind of problems. Those just both had to do with, with what point I chose to calculate the acceleration for. Okay, that's all.